Richard Brijo, UCLA sophomore quarterback, joining us for 10 questions. You ready for this? Yeah. 10 of them. These are tough. <laughs> All right, ready. You ready for this? All right. Uh, this comes from Backdoor Cut. It's the second time he's won this this season. That's, that's impressive. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not so impressive because he's predicting a UCLA loss against Oregon. But, uh, you know what, let me ask you that first. What are your thoughts on, on how fans should approach a game against a team like the number one team in the country? You know, should they have unbridled optimism? Or, or do you say, okay, maybe realistically you're playing the number one team in the country. You can maybe not predict a loss, but, but think one might be in the books. I mean, I, I think, you know, you should always be real and you should always, you know, you, if we're playing the number one team in the country, obviously you're going to have your doubts. But, I mean, as, as a true fan, I'd say you, you can kind of, I, I would, you know, always have that confidence in us that, you know, we can pull one out. Um, but I'd say, you know, you, you want to be real, though. You know, it's I, I, I have mixed views on that, I guess. I can't really put myself in that position because, I, I, I mean, I'm the one playing, you know, I'm the one going to the game. You know, I, I need yeah. to have that confidence that we're going to get it done. But as a fan, you know, you can be real. You can have your doubts. But at the same time, I think, you know, if you're a your true fan, you, you believe in your team that there's always there's always a chance you can get it done. Anything can happen in college football. I okay. Think. Good, good. Very political answer. I like it. <laughs> uh, here we go. Let's jump right into it. Number one. Who's the only guy to win John Gold's Pick the Score contest twice this year? I probably shouldn't have given that away. Say backdoor. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good. Okay. Off to a good start. All right. uh, number two, you throw a very catchable ball. Do the receivers ever mention that to you? Um, you know, they, they always, you know, compliment me on if, if I throw a nice ball, if I, you know, get the ball to them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, guys will say stuff. You know, they like the way I'm, I'm slinging the rock. They like the way I'm throwing it around. So, yeah, I mean, I'd definitely say I'd have a great relationship with every one of our receivers, without a doubt. Okay. Uh, number three, uh, what's the hardest part about playing quarterback at this level, Pac-10, UCLA, etc.? Um, I just say all the responsibility that comes with it. Um, you know, there's there's so many things that you have to account for. You know, as a quarterback at this level, just you have to you, you know break the huddle. You have to go to the line of scrimmage, assess you know what you think the defense is going to play, and then you have to snap the ball, and then really see what they're playing, and then you have to deliver you know a catchable ball to your receivers. You know, you're playing against pretty much every everyone you're playing against was the best in high yeah. school. So, I mean, you're playing against just freakish athletes. Um, but, yeah, I just say just all around the, the whole responsibility, just that you have to have the ability to fix things when um, things maybe you didn't get the right call in. You have to be able to fix it, you know, within a matter of 10 seconds. Um, so, I just, yeah, definitely just say this is all the responsibility that comes with, you know, the quarterback position. Okay. Uh, good answer. Uh, number four, who's the toughest UCLA DB, DB or linebacker for you to beat for a, a completion? Toughest? D Akeem. Akeem, without a doubt, just makes plays that are just ridiculous, just freakish. You guys know, you guys <laughs> yeah. see him. Just will make will make me think I have something, and then just take it away like that. Um, he is definitely, without a doubt, if if he's playing one on one coverage, pretty pretty tough to get a, get a completion against. Okay, uh, if you could be any other football player on the Bruins, who would it be? Any other football player on the Bruins? Um, I'd say. Kai Forbath lives the life, man. <laughs> he, he lives the life. He 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 lives it. I, I would be Kai Forbath if I could be any other player. That's smart. You know you know the team. Uh, number six. Uh, with which receiver do you have the best rapport? Um, I'd say uh, probably Ricky Marbury. Um, you know, the first time I ever met Ricky um, was at our one day camp. Um, I committed Memorial Day, and we had that one day camp. It was like June fifth or something. So it was the first time I actually met Ricky and. He came halfway through camp, um, didn't have the right gear, had his own gear, was coming from some kind of combine, and we were in one-on-ones, and, um, you know, he would make a play, and then he would sprint back and be like, give me another ball, I want to go again. He wouldn't wait in line, he would just, <laughs> and from that point on, I knew this kid, we need that guy, and we got him, fortunately, and now he's, he's making plays just like I knew he would, and so okay. I'd say me and Ricky definitely have that connection just because we've, we've known each other for so long. Okay. Uh, kind of switching gears a little bit. Uh, during the Washington State and Oregon games, how often did you change the play at the line of scrimmage? How did that change turn out generally? Um, quite a bit, I'd say. Um, I mean, there's most of um, the plays we have, we have the ability to check into something else. So, I mean, I wouldn't say I changed it all the time, but I, I'd say, um, I wouldn't say more often than not, but uh, I'd say we, we change it a, a lot. And um, it, it worked out, you know, a, a lot in the... Uh, Washington State game it worked out a lot a lot better than it did in the Oregon game, but at the same time, you know, we still made plays um, in each of the games off of, you know, checks and stuff like that. So, okay. I mean, most of the time it worked out. Okay. Um, switching gears. It's a big gear to switch. Uh, who's your favorite cheerleader? 
Um, well, okay, probably there, with... now he starts blushing. <laughs> now he gets all embarrassed. No, um, my ex girlfriend is Nicolette Leffler on the, the dance team, so she my favorite cheerleader. Oh, <laughs> you're a sweet guy, Richard. Uh, number nine, nice TD run versus Oregon. What one sound effect was going through your head as you made that play? Um, ouch, I got hit right <laughs> in the hand. Um, I think I got a helmet to the hand. Um, mm right as I scored, and I think that was probably the one sound effect that was going through my head. Okay, ouch, that's not bad. And uh, number 10, what do you like the most and least about the pistol offense? Um, I, I love um, the ability, you know, we have um, to take charge at any time and, you know, change to the play to, you know, whatever we think um, is, you know, the right play to be in. Um, the least thing, I, I mean, I can't really say I don't like anything about the pistol offense. Um, I mean... I, I don't think there's anything I, I don't like about it, really. I mean, I love being in um, being in shotgun. I think that's a huge advantage as a quarterback, just being able to see see a lot more of the field um, rather than being in a center. Um, I mean, I can't really say there's anything I, I don't like about it, really, to be honest. Richard, I'm going to add an 11th question real quick. This is one of mine, um, uh, just kind of based on the, the whole pistol question. You guys introduced this offense eight months ago, nine months ago. Talk about how many new wrinkles that you've seen in just those nine months. And I, I think fans maybe expect it to be complete or expect it to be at Nevada's level right now when they've had five years on it. Yeah. Talk about the difference there and, and how many things you learn just week to week that you see, oh my gosh, I didn't even know this was ex existed last week. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There's always um, new things being added to it. You know, play auction off it, you know, new stuff we're trying to do with it. And so... Um, I definitely say that week in and week out, you know, we're constantly changing things and switching the way we've we've done things. You know, we switched um, our footwork, completely switched our footwork from where it was in the spring to when we went to fall camp. We totally switched it around and changed things, um, and it actually it's working for the better. And so, um, yeah, like you said, there's always so many new wrinkles, you know, week in and week out that that we're messing with. We're trying to see if this works, what works. And so, yeah, you're right. Um, there's always new, you know, aspects of pistol that we can bring in um every week okay all right great stuff 11 questions we just bumped it up to 11 <laughs> questions richard brio thanks man yeah